Okay, the next thing you want to do is remove that boot. It's loose at the top, but it's on this bottom right here. You just take a regular screwdriver, stick it in there, and you just need to get underneath the boot and work it up off. But again, being careful that you don't scratch anything. Okay, and then you should be able to just slide it off the tube, like that. Alright, I think before we totally disassemble, we'll clean this up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead. Okay, the next thing you want to do is to remove the cap and pour the oil out. And of course, you want to have the fork tipped up a little bit. So the oil doesn't run out immediately when you pull the cap out. Okay, I'm just going to pull the parts out and place them in order right here. The next thing after the cap is the spacer. And then underneath that is a washer might have to push the bottom up a little bit so you can reach that. Don't get carried away because again the oil will run out if you okay there's a spacer goes right underneath or the flat washer goes right underneath the spacer and then the coil screen and you have to be careful you don't pull a bunch of oil out with that. And then just uh, go ahead and Pour the oil into a suitable container. Now I'm just going to work the fork a little bit to force all the residual oil out. Okay, there's that part. Next, we take the fork apart. Okay, next, uh, you're going to need some tools, of course. Uh, there's an Allen head bolt in the end of the bottom end of the fork, but you'll need an Allen wrench for. And I don't know how big that is. I didn't have the appropriate sized metric one, so I, uh, I grabbed a 5 16 and it fits, so I used it. And you want to put a rag underneath the upper fork tube to make sure that it doesn't get scratched. This Allen in the bottom is not cooperating. There we go. All right, the other thing you'll need is uh, a special tool from Yamaha. Who knows how much that costs? I didn't have the money to buy one, so I made one for myself. I did have access to a couple of long half-inch extensions and uh, a 19 millimeter socket. I then just went to the uh, to the hardware store and bought an eight, excuse me, it's a 12 millimeter coupling nut. And that just happens to fit right into a 19 millimeter socket problem is it's kind of loose and we want that to stay in. So I just took a piece of paper towel, folded it over, laid that on top of the socket and pushed that down in and that tightens it up so it can't fall out. Then it's simply a matter of sliding that down inside the tube. Push it till you feel it engage, and then we have to break that loose. Again, we want to make sure a rag is under that so we don't scratch the upper tube. Now we'll see how this works. Okay, 
Okay, that one wasn't too bad. Broke it loose, so now I'm going to put my ratchet on it. Just twist that out. It's hard to tell when it's totally loose. I can kind of feel my left hand. That Allen wrench gets tweaked each time I uh, twist the ratchet, so I assume when it's loose, I won't feel that anymore. Okay, I think it's out. Yep, yeah, feels loose to me. So, I can pull my tools out. Lay them aside. Move my little work table back over here. And finish the disassembly. Okay, now the next step is just to pull this top part out. Ooh. Like that. And uh, this damper rod has to go out of the top. It does have a little spacer, which d fell out when I pulled that out. Okay, here's the little spacer that goes at the very bottom. It normally slips right on the end of the damper rod. So, let me organize myself a little bit. The damper rod has to come out the top. Might want to hold that over the jug again. So if there's any oil that comes out with it. Okay, there's the tube. There's the damper rod, and it has a spring on it also. Okay. The uh, bulb obviously comes out the bottom. It has a little copper washer on there, which should be replaced. Well, it looks like I might need to use a pair of lean molds to get that one out. Okay, that's it for this step. Okay, before you can pull the seals out, you have to remove a snap ring, and it's open on one end. So you just reach in there and get a hold of that. Pop the end out. There's another little recess that you can come around a little further. and just keep working your way around until you have that out. Okay, the next step is to remove the seals. That's why we're doing all this to replace those. If you have a seal puller, that of course is the best thing to use. And uh, if not, you improvise. A claw hammer will work. It doesn't work as well, but it will work. You just need to be careful that you don't mar the, the fork. So, uh, the, the top part is a dust seal and it should come out quite easy. In fact, you might be able to just get that with a screwdriver. And then again, it depends how long it's been in there and how bad it wants to stay in there. Looks like this one's not going to come out easily. So. Little pumps. There's the bolt. Can you still see it? Yep. Now I, I end up slipping quite a bit because I don't want to go in too far and ding up the tube. And also, uh, it will put nicks in this if you don't cushion the end of the of the hammer as well. So, just push it in there till it engages the, the dust cover, but no more. Man, it's gonna be a tight. So my brother had a lot better idea for a seal puller than I did. A big old wrench. Just get that down in there, cushion the fork. And you have a lot of leverage and it seems to fit in there a little better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, popped right out of there, which is good. <laughs>